Well, greetings everyone. Uh, this is Amal Matu, and I wanted to put a plug in for a workshop that we're going to be doing at the upcoming Resuscitation 2014 conference. It's going to be March 28th through March 31st, 2014 in Las Vegas. This is an annual conference that's been going on for a number of years, and we've added new workshops every single year. The entire content of this conference is different, but perhaps the very best part of this conference is going to be a workshop on dysrhythmias, which is going to be the afternoon of uh, one of the first days. So just as a little bit of a teaser, I put together some sample cases that we're going to cover in this optional workshop. And uh, take a look at these cases. See if you think you know everything that there is to know about dysrhythmias. All of these are real emergency department cases, the type of things that you and I see on a regular basis. So Case number one, 39 year old guy comes into the emergency department complaining of lightheadedness and the EKG machine and the emergency physician call this sinus tachycardia. Well, he's got pretty clear cut sinus looking P waves right up there. He's tachycardic, 39 years old. He gets a liter of IV fluids, another liter, another liter, another liter of IV fluids. And this guy, honest, true story is that this guy was in congestive heart failure before they realized that this is not sinus tachycardia. He actually has the most commonly unrecognized tachy dysrhythmia. We'll, we'll talk about what he should have gotten instead of all this IV fluids. Here's a 61-year-old guy who came in with palpitations and lightheadedness. No surprise, he's got an irregularly irregular wide complex rhythm. What do you do for patients that have wide complex rhythms? Well, easy. You give everybody amiodarone, right? Well, that's exactly what this guy got. He got IV amiodarone, and he went right into ventricular fibrillation. Amiodarone is deadly when you see this tachydysrhythmia. We'll talk about what this is. And here's another scenario. This patient is 46-year-old. She came in with intermittent episodes of lightheadedness. Now, her T-wave inversions that you see up there are old, so we're not going to make anything of that. But what's new is that she's got a prolonged QT. So I'm not going to hide that fact from you. And she kept going in and out of torsade. So what do you do when you see this torsade going on? She's going in and out of torsade. Well, simple. You give magnesium. That's what ACLS teaches you. That's what we've all learned. Magnesium doesn't work in this particular scenario. And it wasn't until we recognized a very simple finding on her 12 lead EKG that we knew why magnesium is not going to work. And we knew what the drug of choice is. She got one dose of the drug of choice and boom, immediately her torsade episode stopped. We'll talk about what that is. We talked already about amiodarone. Let's talk some more about amiodarone. Here's a patient from up on the medical floors, wide complex tachycardia. This patient gets a dose of amiodarone. And what do you think happens with amiodarone? The patient went right into a Brady asystolic arrest and died. We'll talk about why you never give amiodarone to a patient that looks like this. And here's another amiodarone death case. This is an 86 year old guy who presented uh, with an acute MI. The patient got TPA, did pretty well, and about two hours later developed this wide complex tachycardia. The cardiology folks, the cardiology fellow, in fact, diagnosed this patient as having ventricular tachycardia and chose to give amiodarone, and this patient went right into asystole, dead, could not be resuscitated. We'll talk about why it is when you see this tachycardia, you never, ever, ever give this patient amiodarone, or for that matter, lidocaine or procainamide. We'll talk about some Brady dysrhythmias as well. Here's a patient that got brought in with some lightheadedness and a tremendous bradycardia. I'm not even going to bother trying to figure out what the rate is. It's just plain slow. The patient got atropine in the field. It didn't work. Atropine in the emergency department. It didn't work. Transcutaneous pacing didn't work. Then went on to get IV epinephrine or dopamine. I don't remember which one it was. It doesn't matter. Neither one of those will work. The patient got the drug of choice, which is not listed in the ACLS bradycardia algorithm. We'll talk about what it is when you see this type of bradycardia. What is the drug of choice? We'll talk about this rhythm where the computer calls this a Mobitz 2. Why does the computer call this a Mobitz 2? It's because there are P waves in there that are not being conducted and they're followed by pauses. All right, so you're thinking, is this Mobus 1? Is this Mobus 2? Well, that's pretty easy, right? You just take a look at the PR intervals, and all of the PR intervals look pretty much constant. That means this must be a Mobus 2, right? Wrong. This patient does not have a Mobus 2. This patient does not need atropine 
or a transcutaneous or a transvenous pacer. It turned out this patient needed just a little potassium and the patient went right back to normal sinus rhythm, problem solved. But this patient got an unnecessary admission, believe it or not, to the ICU with plans for a pacemaker because they misread the 12 lead and so did the computer. How about this one? This patient's got atrial flutter, right? There's no question there, atrial flutter with a relatively slow ventricular rate. The patient's 67 years old and is hypotensive. What does ACLS tell you to do? Well, this patient's got what would be considered an unstable dysrhythmia and the patient's got atrial flutter. We've got to shock this patient, right? Absolutely wrong. This patient doesn't need cardioversion. In fact, this patient needs a pacemaker. We'll talk about why this patient with atrial flutter actually needs a pacemaker. So that's just a sampling of what we're going to talk about in this dysrhythmia workshop. The bottom line is we're not going to talk about the basics. If you want to learn the basics, I can refer you to some books, but if you want to go beyond the basics, you've got to check out this dysrhythmia workshop. We're going to talk about deadly dysrhythmias, the type of dysrhythmias that patients will die from if you don't know how to diagnose and manage them properly. Check it out on the Resuscitation 2014 website. The website is www.resuscitation-conference.com. You can take a look at the entire conference format. It's going to be a fantastic conference, and there's going to be some really, really great workshops to choose from. This is going to be one of the great workshops to check out. It's going to be optional workshops every afternoon, and this one's going to be on the first afternoon. Dysrhythmia is to die for. Again, hope to see you there in Las Vegas at this particular workshop and at the rest of the conference as well. If you have any questions, send me an email, amulmatu at comcast.net, www.resuscitation-conference.com. Great brochure. Check it out. See you there.